Hello everybody, welcome back to the Bad Booker's Wrestling Podcast. My name is Jack and today we're with Shane Barr. Um, and I thought it was quite fun, to be fair. I came into it with no expectations whatsoever. I didn't really care for the majority, if not all, of the matches. Um, I just wanted some good, clean wrestling action. I wanted Buddy Murphy to keep his title and Daniel Bryan to keep his title. That's what I wanted. And those things happened. Um, we'll start off with the Cruiserweight match. It was on the pre-show. Buddy Murphy versus Akira Tozawa. Decent match, to be fair, um, as it usually is. Just a standard 205 live match. There was a lot of Tozawa trying to chop Buddy Murphy, uh, but Buddy Murphy kind of absorbing it, and throughout the match, Tozawa will get better and better. Uh, a lot of good near falls, but overall, Buddy Murphy came through with the victory. Um, oh, he had a slick move. It, ended, it was like one move slicking into... Is Murphy's Law, but I can't remember what it was. I, I didn't write any notes for this, because <laughs> I'm professional, and I don't remember what happened. But we'll, we'll kick off. Buddy Murphy uh, retaining the Cruiserweight Championship, and what did I rate this match? Three and a, three and a quarter stars, I think it was. Yeah, three and a quarter stars I rated this match. It was, it was a good match. It was a cruiserweight match i always enjoy cruiserweight matches but the first match on the main show was the women's tag team championship elimination chamber and this was a pretty fun match it, like, it wasn't great but it wasn't bad either it was it was fun everyone got their their bit in the limelight if you will and i didn't really care who i i didn't mind who won as long as it wasn't Carmella and Naomi, because they're not a tag team. They were just, just shoved together to have a sixth team. Um, but other than that, I didn't mind who won, because I didn't particularly care. Um, I've, I've never been a fan of the idea of women's tag team titles. I much prefer like a, a singles mid-card title for the women. Um, but maybe that will come as well. You know, We, ne we never know uh, with those types of things. But uh, the match was, like I said... It was, it was fun. It wasn't good, it was fun. I think I rated this three and a quarter stars as well. Um, yeah, three and a quarter stars. It lasted about 45 minutes, I believe. It didn't feel like 45 minutes whatsoever. Um, Carmella and Naomi were the first to get eliminated by the Iconics, I believe it was. And the, both of the Iconics pinned in Naomi. One rolling them up, and then I think Peyton Royce jumped over Billy Kay and grabbed the legs so they were both holding them both down. Um, which I thought was really good, really cool. We've seen it before, I can't remember where, but really cool. We then had, a, like, the, the Iconics were celebrating because they eliminated Carmella and um, and Naomi, and everyone kind of stood up in the ring and turned to them. But as they did, uh, the last team were coming out, which were Nia, Nia Jax and Tamina, and the Iconics were like, go for them, go for them, they're the danger. Um, everyone turned towards Nia Jax and Tamina while Iconics jogged on back to their pod to hide in the pod. Um... Nia Jax, Tamina, as expected, um, cleaned house, got the Iconics out of the pod. The, they then eliminated um, they eliminated the Iconics with a d double Samoan drop, I think it was, or was that after? I can't remember, but they eliminated the Iconics with a double Samoan drop. And I think they eliminated the Riot Squad by Nia Jax hitting that middle rope Samoan drop um, from, the, yeah, from the middle rope and um, pinning... Liv Morgan, I think it was. And so, yeah, so the last three in the match were Nia Jax, Tamina, Bailey Sasha, and Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. The last two starting the match, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Bailey, and Sasha, they started the match and they finished the match as well as Nia Jax went to put, I think it might have been Sasha Banks, through the pod. Sasha Banks moved out the way and Nia Jax just full pelted, went into the pod, smashed the unshattable glass and um kind of ran into the into the other side of the pod knocked herself out she was laying in the pod and then everyone just turned on tamina tamina had a look of emotion on her face it was incredible <laughs> she actually looked worried for a for a partner they all um teamed up on tamina sasha hitting I think Sasha hit a bank statement and then Bailey hit an elbow drop. 
something along those lines. But ba yeah, Bailey hit an elbow dropped and pinned Tamina to eliminate them. So the last two of the match, Bailey, Sasha, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, and the Boss and Hug connection walk out as the first ever tag team champions in the women's division, which is it's kind of cool because all the horsewomen. Um, our inaugural champion. So Charlotte was the inaugural Raw, Raw Women's Champion. Becky Lynch, SmackDown Women's Champion, and um, Bailey and Sasha are now the inaugural Tag Team Champions. So it's pretty cool, pretty nifty. Uh, like I said, I didn't mind who who won. Uh, I, I would quite like the Iconics to win, but they'll they'll probably get their moment to shine. Um, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But decent opener to the match. Um, everyone was happy that Bailey and Sasha won and we'll have to see who they face maybe maybe they'll face Sasha and Lita uh Sasha and Lita, Lita and Trish Stratus at Mania I wouldn't want to see it I'd rather see someone else on the roster you know um but yeah Bailey Sasha are the new and inaugural women's tag team champions the Smackdown live tag team championships the Miz comes out first which I, I was about to cry about because champions shouldn't come out first uh, but he announced him and Maurice announced they're having another kid so that was cool uh, then Shane came out with the Usos and then they had the match which was just, it was a it was a pretty entertaining match um, it wasn't I just, I just can't get into it because I don't I'm, I'm not into the whole Shane McMahon Miz thing so I can't get into it whatsoever but I, I love the Usos so much there was your standard Shane, Shane McMahon um, stuff, coast to coast, onto one of the Usos. He then went back up to the top rope to hit another coast to coast, only to get super kicked by um, said Uso in the other corner. And Shane also did his leap of faith from the top rope down to the announce table, onto an Uso, and The Miz hit his skull crescent finale. I'm, I'm thinking it might be Jimmy. I can't remember. I've slept since then. Um... He pinned Jimmy, but it was really lackluster pin. And um, Jimmy managed to kind of crucifix pin um, Miz out of nowhere on the counter two. He just switched up the pin for, switched all the way. And the Usos are your new SmackDown Live tag team champions, which I thought was an absolute surprise, especially all the personal life shenanigans that has gone on for the Usos recently. Um, but... I was sure that Shane and Miz would keep hold of them until at least fast lane. Uh but whatever. I'm cool with it. I'm I'm more than happy with the Usos being uh tag team champions once again. I just hope that maybe at Mania we can get I wouldn't mind Usos versus New Day at Mania once again. A New Day team of Big E and Xavier Woods anyway, because we'll get on to we'll get on to that later on. But I'm just glad the Usos are champions. Champions. It just seems like you look at the tag team champions now. Obviously, the women's tag team champions, Sasha and Bailey, good. I'm happy. The Raw Raw tag team champions in the revival, which finally <laughs> about time. And now the SmackDown tag team champions in the Usos. They finally got champions that I feel are good enough <laughs> because, like, yeah, it's great that the B team are champions. It's great that. Um, Heath Slater and Rhino are champions um, good we can get behind the bar the bar are decent but Chad Gable and Bobby Roode they're not really a tag team why are they tag team champions you know it's I'm just glad that there's tag teams that you know are good and I'm not saying the bar aren't any good because they are they're fantastic but the Usos are just out of this world and they're one of the best tag teams in the world so I'm very very glad they won the match we then had the Intercontinental title match uh, between Bobby Lashley, the Intercontinental title, and a champion even, he's not the title, and Leo Rush in a handicap match against Finn Balor, and it, it went down how I expected it to go down. Like the last match, this match was a, a three-star match, I believe, that I've rated it, because, you know, it's it was above, above decent, um... But it's exactly, um, well, I, I say I say the last match was exactly the, the Elimination Chamber match. It exactly went how I thought it would. 
And Finn Balor is now your new Intercontinental Champion, pinning Leo Rush after Bobby Lashley had Finn Balor won. He had him beat down, and Leo Rush tagged him in just to do his frog splash uh, to pick up the win. Screams of Drake Maverick, Drake Maverick even, and AOP when they lost uh, the the uh, tag titles. It screams of that Drake Maverick. Drake Maverick can't speak. Uh, taking the pin then, and Leo Rush taking the pin this time. And then afterwards, Bobby Lashley destroyed Leo Rush, sp splitting them up. We'll have to wait and see until tonight to see whether they what happens there. But it doesn't matter because finally, Finn Balor, Intercontinental Champion, he's got some gold around his waist. Finally, um, he hasn't held, he hasn't held any since Universal Title, has he? So and that was the day. So um, finally. Uh, hopefully he can hold it until WrestleMania and beyond because he, he deserves it. He does deserve it. And we'll have to wait and see what happens with Bobby Rush. And Bobby Rush. <laughs> Bobby Rush. We'll have to wait and see what happens with uh, those two because I really, really, really want to see Buddy Murphy versus Leah Rush. Really want to see that. I think that match would be absolutely quality. Um, but Leah Rush might stay on the main roster. We don't know yet. Um, but yeah. Finn Balor, new IC champion. We then had the Raw Women's Championship match and it couldn't have gone as expected uh, because everyone, every, Ronda Rousey versus Ruby Riot, everyone was like, it's going to be a squash. It's going to be a squash. And then people were like, yeah, it might not be a squash. Ruby Riot could give Ronda Rousey a really good match, potentially one of her better matches uh, up there with Sasha Banks at the Rumble, etc., etc. It was a squash. Um, two minutes, I think it was. Something like that. It felt like two minutes anyway. Um, Ronda Rousey hitting her spinning some other drop thing, whatever it's called, um, onto Ruby Riot and then sticking the arm bar. Ruby Riot tapped out fairly quickly and then scattered off to the backstage area because Charlotte Flair entered the ring. Obviously, she was at the ringside uh, for this match. She entered the ring before they, they had a stare off you know to kind of build hype for this wrestlemania match and then ronda just looked to her her right and looked at the crowd the crowd would go mental and becky lynch was walking in in crutches because apparently she re-injured re a knee at a house show the night before um wearing some weird sort of kill bill kind of suit like except the other way around like mainly black not get what i mean um and she limps to the ring with her crutches no security to stop her and whatnot she gets into the ring and just starts wailing on charlotte with these crutches absolutely demolishing charlotte ronda then picks up one of the crutches and they have a standoff her and becky before becky offers charlotte to ronda ronda is about to hit charlotte with the crutch before becky then wails on ronda catching ronda on the head i think ronda was bleeding like there or somewhere and it was only a second strike, I think. She strikes her on the back and then she kind of lost control of her swings, if you will, and cut cut Ronda on the head, which is a shame. Um, you should learn from what's happened before to you, Becky, that don't be too wild in what you do, uh, because if you start doing that more, people are going to get on your backs and whatnot. So just be careful next time when you're swinging a crutch. <laughs> um, but yeah... Ronda Rousey retains the title. Becky Lynch destroys both Ronda and Charlotte with the crutch. She then gets dragged away by security with a fat grin on her face. I don't think it was ne necessary as such, but it was it was quite fun, and it just leads more into that triple threat, which I'm more than happy with. I'm more than happy. But the main part of that was Ronda Rousey retains her Raw Women's Championship. We then had the kind of filler match, I guess you could say. Everyone was excited for the Becky coming out and destroying people. And then we had this match and then the Elimination Chamber for the WWE titles, the main event. So this match was the Braun Strowman versus Baron Corbin match. It didn't last long, um, but I, I was certain that Baron Corbin would win here, get his revenge on... Uh, did I say Baron Corbin? I was certain that Braun Strowman was going to win here, get his revenge on Baron Corbin. Um, but that didn't happen. In fact, Drew McIntyre, as it was non-DQ, Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley came out and destroyed 
Braun Strowman was chairs and whatnot. They did. They then did a fantastic spot where they set up a table with some ring steps next to it, and then put another table on top of that table. So it was table stacked up. Jumped onto um, the steel steps and then triple like shield power bomb, if you will, to Braun Strowman through the two tables, and it looked. It looks brutal. I love the spot. And then Baron Corbin picking up the win on Braun Strowman, which, I mean, I, I think it's going to be Braun versus Drew at WrestleMania, which I don't mind, but it kind of means that Braun Strowman's going to win, which is a shame for Drew. Um, I really want... Drew just can't stay away from three-man teams, can he? Um, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. Hopefully it's Bobby Lashley versus... Braun Strowman or something like that, and Drew's somewhere else, maybe facing Finn for the title, um, because that would be a fantastic match. And you know what? I said earlier that Finn Balor should hold the title from to Mania and beyond. I wouldn't mind a Drew McIntyre win there. That'd be quite good, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. It's more than likely going to be Drew versus Strowman at uh, WrestleMania. But we'll get on to the main event. Like I said, the main event of the evening, uh, the WWE Championship match for the four four in the inside the elimination chamber um this match was a hell of a match it really there's not many matches i get lost in the moment but this match i just got lost in it and just fully indulged in it and it was fantastic the last match the last two matches i must say uh ronda versus ruby got two and a half stars corbin versus Braun got two and three quarter stars um but this match I rated as a four star match, which I thought was a, like I, it was a little bit harsh on it. Um, I think it should have been higher than the four star match, but I gave it four stars purely as a couple of one thing I didn't like, and that was Samoa Joe getting eliminated first by AJ Styles, wasn't it? I think it was AJ Styles that eliminated him after, yeah, it was after a phenomenal forearm. Um, Samoa Joe, he got eliminated first in the Survivor Series match. Um, there was something else he didn't last long in. Was it the Royal Rumble? I can't remember if he lasted long in the Royal Rumble or not. But uh, now he's getting eliminated first in the Elimination Chamber match. It's just like, oh, come on, man. He's really good. You can't be eliminated. You have Jeff Hardy in the match who can easily just take that spot. Or if you want a shock factor, have AJ Styles go out first, you know? Samoa Joe just gets the gets the short end of the stick constantly, and it's kind of annoying. But like I said, AJ Styles eliminating Samoa Joe with the phenomenal forearm. We then had um, Jeff Hardy get eliminated by Daniel Bryan after a running knee. So that leaves us with four. Randy Orton eliminated AJ Styles. It's a, very, a very unique look. I don't think I've ever seen it before. RKO. Um, just because, you know, Randy Orton and, and timing is just always perfection. Um, AJ Styles just jumped onto the rope to hit a phenomenal forearm on Kofi, I think it was. Randy Orton was there to RKO him and taking AJ Styles out of the match. It just looked, it looked beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, so the final three, Kofi Kingston, Randy Orton, WWE Champion, Daniel Bryan, and Kofi got his revenge on Randy Orton after all these years, pinning, did he hit a trouble in paradise? I think he did hit a trouble in paradise, and then pinning Randy Orton. So the final two were the WWE Champion and everyone who was behind in the gauntlet match after his fantastic showing of an hour, and want, they all wanted Kofi to win, including me. I was like, I was lost in the moment. There was one fantastic, fantastic near for, um, Daniel Bryan hitting the running knee on Kofi and everyone was like I was I was pretty much in bed. I was like, alright, that's over then. Um one, two, it was literally two point nine. It was one of the closest near falls that I've seen. Kofi kicking out and it's just like Holy crap Kofi's winning. Kofi's winning here. Holy crap and Kofi had a fantastic win. This time last week we didn't know who was replacing Mustafa Ali, if Mustafa Ali had even announced that it, it was an injury there. Um, we just thought, you know, Kofi Kingston, he's a fun-loving, you know, he's a veteran of the company, but he's doing all right in the new day. A week later, 
we all, everyone, I'm pretty sure the whole of Twitter will get just on Kofi's side. Everyone wanted Kofi to be the new WWE champion. And it shows that under pressure and having to change things up quick, WWE are quality at doing that. And they got everyone behind Kofi and everything that um, could get people behind Kofi they did. And they did to perfection as well. And I'm sure come WrestleMania, Kofi Kingston will have a singles title, whether that be a United States title or WWE title, Intercontinental, whatever. He will, I'm sure, at WrestleMania. That's why I said earlier, Usos versus New Day in um, with Big E and Xavier Woods being the tag team. That's because I want to see Kofi for maybe the top title, maybe in like a triple threat or something, or a fatal four-way. I don't know how a, a singles match would work, um, even though their singles match was absolutely quality in this Elimination Chamber and in the Gauntlet match. I don't know, I just don't think uh, that's, that's the kind of singles match for WrestleMania. I might, I might, you know, I might be wrong, but I just don't think maybe a fatal four-way between Kofi, AJ, Daniel Bryan, Samojo, something like that. Um, but if it's a singles match, I'm sure it'll be absolutely quality. Uh, but I'm, I'm certain, I'm certain at WrestleMania, Kofi Kingston will be a singles champion. And they don't have to break up the New Day for it. Because of what's just happened, they don't have to break up the New Day for it. So, good. Fantastic. Um, but, inevitably, Daniel Bryan did pick up the win with the running knee. After Kofi, Kofi jumped off the, the top of the pod, trying to hit a splash on Daniel Bryan, who moved away, running knee, one, two, three, Daniel Bryan retained, no interference from Eric Rowan, no interference from any of the rumoured names of Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper and whatnot, but I'm glad that Daniel Bryan is still WWE Champion, we just have to wait and see who, he, who he's going to face at Mania, maybe it's Kofi, maybe it's someone else, but that was Elimination Chamber, I think... Like I said, I gave that a four a four star um, because I, I should have gave it more, but I've stuck with my guns, given it four star. Overall, I'm going to give Elimination Chamber three and a half stars. I think it was. It was a nice short show. It was about four hours fifteen, including pre show, so three hours fifteen main show, which is the same length as Raw. But these pay per views should be that length. They they should be around three four hours. Not five, six hours. That's just too much for a, a Hell in a Cell or an Elimination Chamber, TLC. Like, these gimmick pay-per-views don't need to be long. Don't need to be long at all. But yeah, um, Elimination Chamber gets a three and a half star from me. I didn't have any expectations going into it. I enjoyed the night. I enjoyed the wrestling that was on the, on show. And yeah, storylines, everything seemed to make sense. Seems to make sense. As of, as of now... It seemed to make sense. Um, if you did like that, please leave a like on the video. It means a hell of a lot to me. Please subscribe if you're new around here. We're nearly closing in on 100 subscribers. Hopefully we can get that before WrestleMania. That'll be fantastic. And I'll see you again tonight, Monday Night Raw. I'll be at, I'll be at work, probably, doing Monday Night Raw review. Um, but yeah, it should be fan-dabby-dozy. Thank you very much for watching.